American Rebellion, of course. That's what we call it, rather than the uh, American War of Independence, because they rebelled against the king. So you are, what unit are you? Shrapnel's Battery. I know it's 1775 was the Declaration of Independence, so we're 1770s. And this, this was a standard uniform issued to every artilleryman. They were issued with three shoes and they're square cut, you can wear them on either feet. Gaiters, again to protect you going through fields or whatever, and it also held your legs up a bit more. Ordinary uh, breeches. Waistcoat, shirt, top coat, cross belts, bread bag this side, ammunition pouch the other side. Being an artilleryman, you'd also be carrying a powder horn, which is good, which is there, and water bottle. Square pack for your blanket and everything else, and that was a standard issue uniform. And the cap, what's the name of your The hat? tricorn was uh, there. It's a pain in the neck because if you're carrying a musket as a red coat would, you turn your head, the musket will knock your hat off. That's why in later life the artillery and other units changed to the shallow the straight hat with the peak. As I say, this is a standard uniform. The musket is only a carbine, it's a short brown vest, because we carry them across our shoulders and not hanging from them because we're handling the cannon and uh, the big guns. How, how do you mean, cross your shoulders? Goes across. I won't put the strap on, but it will go across. There, like that. Without strap across here. And you li would let it go? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it will stay there. I mean, these are actually about £10. So when you've been carrying one for a, sort of a, a few miles, you know you've been carrying it. Right. Uh, and of course, as I say, we, we would use them to give them out of the way to handle the guns. They're mainly for self-protection. Should a gun emplacement be overrun, you could protect yourself. Same as we are issued with the bayonets, bayonets as well. As well. Right, yeah. okay. um, it's not a lot of good because being a short weapon, you haven't got the reach. But if somebody came over a gun emplacement, yes, you could um, tickle him with the point of a bayonet quite nicely. If a horse came over the top, you didn't stand much chance, of course. And uh, that was it. A guard, uh, when you're on guard duty, you might have been issued with a great coat. But normally, even in the infantry, there was one great coat per unit. Um, flintlock. There's a fire port there. Pans filled with powder. Frizzen, this is a frizzen. It's shut to keep the powder in. Then it would be reversed. Again, standard procedure. The rest of the powder goes in with the ball, paperwork, rams home, and then he would pull it up. At the moment it's on half cock, it will not, I don't know. When it's on half cock, it should not fire, which it didn't. I actually was on full cock. When it's on full cock, it will spark and fire the musket. That's, that's about it. We carried um, 18 cartridges in a cartridge box. Here. here. The infantry carried more, they carried 26. You see in here there's the holes for the cartridges. The balls were made up like that, which are ordinary soft lead, cast, and they were just snipped off and then they were made up into cartridges. And uh, you, you would snip them off? or uh, Normally the armourer would make them up because of the handling of the loose powder. But um, yeah, there's no reason why a gunner couldn't do it, or even an infantryman, but normally infantrymen particularly were, no disrespect, farm labourers, so they wouldn't have the knowledge, whereas an artilleryman would know how to handle powder. But uh, normally they would be bulk made. You know, you'd have an armourer making up hundreds of them with his team, and then they'd be issued when you went into battle. How many crew in your gun team? A normal gun, a normal gun team for a three pound, the one like that, would be about uh, twelve people. Twelve? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You only you only need about four to six to fire it, but you've got to carry the balls, powder, everything else. Because don't forget, in our day, there was no such things as lorries. Horses were only used for two things: sitting in offices on or eating. 
So, you know, this is it. You walked everywhere and you carried everything. If you were very lucky, you got a team of red coats to pull your gun for you. So it's foot drawn artillery? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, the big guns were oxen, pulled by oxen. And that would, that would be uh, supplied by the uh, commissariat. You would actually hire them in. Yeah. So you keep up with the regular infantry in, in an advance? Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It would only be the heavy guns. Siege, the siege guns that would be behind and they would take some time to get there but um, of course once you've got the infantry in place with a light cannon you could um, enclose an area and keep people in their place until you came up with the big guns to uh, get break into the fortifications. <laughs>